In today's video, we're going to be talking about warts, which is a viral skin infection caused by the human papilloma virus. We're not going to talk about genital warts in this video. There's over a hundred different types of the human papilloma virus, and it can only be spread via direct human to human contact. And this usually occurs due to a break in the barrier of the skin, allowing the virus to penetrate through. The people who are most susceptible to getting warts are those with a weak immune system, those with eczema, because those with eczema have greater breakage in the barrier of the skin, and those who use public shower facilities like gyms and swimming pools. When we look specifically what happens to the cells of the body which are infected by the human papilloma virus, you can see this, this layer of the skin which is called the basal keratinocyte layer becomes infected and then we have epidermal hyperplasia or overgrowth which is seen clinically as this warty kind of lesion. If we look microscopically we can see thickening of the stratum corneum, stratum spinosum and stratum granulosum layers. There's also elongation of these reet ridges. So there's different types of warts based on the appearance and the affected site. So we have filiform warts, periungal warts, plantar warts, flat warts, and also common warts. To explain it briefly, filiform warts have these long, thin projections, and you can most commonly see them on the face. Periungal warts, they usually appear around the nails, and they have a cauliflower shape. Plantar warts, or verrucas, form these painful plaques. And we have uh, flat warts, which are these small, smooth, flattened warts, and they're most commonly seen on the face, neck, wrists and knees. The thing to remember about a human papilloma virus warts is that there may be a potential for them to become malignant so they could turn into some form of cancer and, and the risk is in particular to those individuals who have some kind of immunosuppression so if they have HIV or if they're taking certain medication so important care needs to be taken to monitor certain warts if they have not been um, removed by the body itself or if they uh, increase in size then really a biopsy should be taken to monitor the risk and see if there is um, transformation to a type of squamous cell carcinoma so that should always be uh, something that the patient is wary of now the treatment of warts um, some warts they resolve on their own so the immune system of the body just naturally gets rid of the warts some medications are also available including salicyclic acid salicyclic acid exfoliates the skin of the wart and there's an immune response by the body and if you do this um, repeatedly it can lead to the removal of the wart other medications include imicrimod, which is um, a drug which increases the amount of interferons which are present in the area affected by the virus, and this leads to a removal of the wart by the immune system. And there's also some procedures which could be performed uh, physically to remove the wart, for example, cryotherapy, which is where we freeze the wart with some kind of liquid nitrogen. Other basic treatment methods include um, using duct tape placed over the wart, and if this is done repeatedly, the wart eventually gets removed. There's been enough trials, even though there's no medication being used, that duct tape can be proven to be effective. Laser treatment may also be available, including a carbon dioxide laser, but it may lead to scarring in the area.